Hey beautiful goddesses, today I'm talking feminine energy and I'm sharing 10 tips to be more feminine. It doesn't matter that you can't see my face, okay? Just trust me. And anybody can achieve this. It doesn't matter what you look like. <laughs> okay, tip number one, always have your nails done, always. But not too long because that is ratchet and you're not going to attract a high value man. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. No shade, no shade, no shade. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're good, hope you're well. Today we are talking about feminine energy, femininity, that kind of wave of content and the pressure to be feminine. But before we start, do you like my hair? Thank you so much to Nubia's Crown for sponsoring this video. I am wearing their classic locks in 14 inches and I can't lie to you, I'm feeling myself. You haven't seen me wear my natural hair out for quite a long time and I can't lie, it's been out of laziness, but now I'm starting to see what the hype is about protective styling because my hair underneath is flourishing. <laughs> so Nubia's Crown is a black woman owned business boop, boop, and they specialize in just that, really easy protective styles that promote black beauty. You see me rock faux locks in the past and I exclusively after the first time, <laughs> do crochet locks. And usually I just get them from Amazon and I thought easy peasy, they're all the same, but I was wrong. I did not know what I did not know. <laughs> what I love about this hair, the quality of the hair itself, top tier, but it's the loop for me. <laughs> what I mean by that is that obviously all the hair always comes with a loop like this. And the ones I normally get, some of them you get that clean loop, some of them you don't. And it really slows down the process of actually putting the locks in because the crochet hook be getting stuck, everything can be getting tangled. But what I really loved about this is that it was so easy to put on specifically for this reason. So that's I think the thing I liked about this hair the most, but of course the quality of it is really nice. What I also do with my hair is I do single, so I don't cornrow my hair back. I just do single plaits. I crochet each one in and then I wrap it. If you want more detail, I have got a video, a detailed video of me doing my individual crochet locks, which means that I can part it wherever I want and it looks more natural. I got five packs and I think I used two and a half. I'm loving this look guys. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm really feeling myself, I can't lie to you. <laughs> I will leave all the details for this hair down below so you can check them out and you can buy it for yourself. But yeah, let's get into the video. All right, the backstory of how I came about this topic. I did my beauty standards video previously and a couple of the comments were like, can you talk about femininity? Can you talk about pressure to be feminine, feminine energy. And I thought 100% because that is also a topic that I've been thinking about. I've been seeing it a lot. I've seen a rise or maybe it's just the algorithm, I don't know, but I've been seeing a rise in content surrounding femininity, titles like 10 tips to be more feminine, feminine energy, blah, 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 blah. A lot of um, femininity thumbnails, 99.9% .9 of which have Lori Harvey as their cover girl. Just an observation. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> so I thought, okay, yes, I'm gonna do this topic. However, I thought, no, let me wait to do this topic because I need to do some research. Yes, I've been seeing the topic pop up, but I haven't really engaged with the conversation and I can't lie to you, what I was seeing, literally just titles and just thumbnails and just like old conversations here and there, I was, I was, getting, a bit, I was getting a bit triggered. I can't lie to you, I was just like, what is this? <laughs> so I knew, okay, if so many people are talking about it, maybe I'm just being triggered for something that I don't understand. Let me do a bit more research. Let me like dig into what these act things actually mean. And then <laughs> I'll do a topic on it. And here we are. And yes, I was correct when I told myself, Adela, you're probably just being triggered by external things that you're then projecting into this topic without actually knowing it. So yeah, I came to understand what is actually meant by feminine and masculine energy. I learned that they are just sort of traits that are labeled feminine and masculine. And some feminine traits are maybe more prominent in women, generally speaking, and vice versa for masculine energy and men. And I, to be honest, that's something that I knew. I didn't know it was titled, but I kind of believe that like, yeah, men and women, generally speaking, are different. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a good thing, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it is what it is. And I think the two traits together, um, working in harmoniously can can produce great results in any setting and i've also um learned and understood that we have both we have feminine energy we have masculine energy we need them for different things they're just good blah 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 blah, blah, blah. so triggers averted and i also learned i think that this whole topic of feminine energy, those sort of conversation points, femininity, blah, 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 they are for a certain audience. 
And that makes sense. Every content on this app, on this platform, is for a certain audience, right? And if you don't subscribe to that school of thought, then the content simply is not for you. My content is not for everyone, but if it's for you, subscribe. <laughs> so that's what I learned. I said, I don't know how the algorithm fed me this these topics. So I found some of them interesting, but it's not really my school of thought. It's not really what I'm gonna invest my time and my energy into. Make sense? I'll just, I'll just stay in my lane, as we all should do really and truly. However, unfortunately, I do think that when a topic or a school of thought starts to garner momentum and garner um, popularity, they do start to influence people that shouldn't necessarily or don't necessarily need to be influenced by it and don't necessarily need to subscribe to it. And maybe those people start to feel a type of way or type of pressure that they don't need to feel because that is not their lane and they don't understand that that is okay. That's when I come in, because I like to encourage. <laughs> so I'm not bashing that part of YouTube, I'm not bashing that topic, but I do wanna address what feels like uh, a growing sort of out of context, increasing pressure for um, people, women to be feminine. And I put feminine in quotation marks because I feel like it is an out of context extension of femininity that is not femininity in its entirety, but is sometimes being packaged as femininity in its entirety. Yeah. Firstly, I feel like um, when not tackled correctly, it can pressure women to be somebody that they're not. Ask my friends, yeah. <laughs> At least once a quarter, I've said, do you know what, yeah? I wanna be sexy. That's my thing, I don't know, I don't know what that means. I always like, yeah, I'm gonna be sexy. This year, I'm gonna be sexy, I wanna be more sexy, grown and sexy. What does that mean? I don't know. But in hindsight, <laughs> I feel like it was uh, just another word for me, basically wanting to be more feminine. I'm feminine in many ways. However, certain things like I talk a lot. <laughs> I talk a lot. I share a lot. I am an open book. And obviously, you know, a lot of the feminine school of thought that I hear is like, you know, don't talk too much and keep something secret. I'll be blabbing. <laughs> Another thing is that I'm not always like very well put together. This is YouTube. <laughs> this is not me. This is what I look like this morning. So often and so, I, like I make a vow to myself that oh, I'm gonna be put together, I'm gonna be well groomed, I'm gonna do my nails, I'm gonna always have my hair kept. And I've now come to accept that it's just not me. It's not me. It's long, it's just not natural to me. It's not adding any value to my life. It's not adding any value to anyone else's life around me, to be honest. And if that is you, because I know people, I know people who are just so put together and it's not even by force. It's just naturally how they are or it's what they like to do. So they make the effort, fair enough, but come on, not me, not by force. Secondly, I feel like sometimes some of these topics underplay the more meaningful, the more valuable, um, parts of femininity in favor of surface level aesthetics and characteristics. Example being what you wear, how you talk, instead of other sort of meatier traits of femininity like expressiveness, creativity, being nurturing, our emotional intelligence. Like, and unfortunately I feel like it gives femininity a bad rap as being almost useless, like feminine traits are useless when actually they're very useful in all areas of life. Like you can't have a household, a workplace that's just full of masculine energy. You need that feminine energy. And unfortunately, there's nothing wrong with feminine energy. There's nothing wrong with feminine traits. They are very valuable. Unfortunately, the way that people see them is as they are less than the masculine traits when actually, if the world was just full of masculine energy, it would crumble. So I think sometimes I wish these topics were maybe a bit more weighted on, um, in my opinion, what are maybe the more meaningful traits of femininity and not like the surface level aesthetic stuff. Because then it also feels a bit exclusive. Anyways, I'm getting on to the next point. Because what kind of um, message does this give to women who are quote unquote unfeminine in by these standards of like these surface level things? Like what happens if you're a tomboy? What happens if you're assertive? What happens if you're a CEO? Like my mate, Courtney Daniela, go subscribe to her YouTube channel. She has a podcast with her best friend, Renee Kabuku. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel. <laughs> it's called To My Sisters. I'm sure a lot of you have probably listened to it already if you haven't, check it out. But they did an episode about this, about femininity, feminine energy. And I just thought they explained it really well. So go listen to the whole episode, but I'm gonna play you just a clip where she makes a very, very good point. I'm about, I'm about, like mm -hmm. you, you see me, I'm there. So it's like, do I need to make myself smaller? because I'm so big, do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Talk 
quieter, talk a bit more high pitch, Mm -hmm. emphasize my femininity, you know, do my hair a certain way, wear certain colors and certain clothes, wear makeup all the time. So Mm -hmm. I come across more feminine. No, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to do it because it's one, it's uncomfortable for me. There are some people who are quote unquote girly girls, you know, and it's the thing that they love, but the way they're given the freedom to do what they love is the same way I should be given the freedom to be comfortable as who I am. Right. And so the issue with, oh, but what if a guy doesn't like me? You don't exist to appeal to all men. Okay. Internalize what I do. You do not have to appeal to all men for your womanhood to be qualified. Well, 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 she said it better than I could. And actually, thanks Courtney, you have um, allowed me to segue nicely into my final point. And this is probably my biggest issue when it comes to the sort of the bad side of these femininity conversations is that they are way too centered, in my opinion, around men, around attracting men, around attracting a high value man. Should we talk about high value? Anyways, (laughs) that's probably my biggest issue with some of the conversations. If you want to be more feminine to attract a partner, by all means do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there is anything wrong with that. What I think is wrong is when we center the whole notion of femininity in its entirety around the male gaze, around attracting a man. That is problematic for so many reasons. Obviously because it breeds a people pleasing pick me mentality, but also because sometimes these attracting a man conversations feel like they are equating your ability to attract a man with your measurement of value full stop. So like when we live in a man's world, unfortunately what a man wants, what a man desires starts to become synonymous with what is valuable, which of course is nonsense, but unfortunately, and we can't blame them, women start to subscribe to that. And so rather than wanting to be feminine because femininity has so many great traits and wanting to, maybe you just, you want those traits more so than you want the masculine traits, or maybe it's just more natural to you. Instead of doing it for those reasons, we end up doing it for the male gaze to be picked by men. And that's just no way to live your life. And then also we sometimes then, okay, you've been picked. Okay, you've you've found someone, but now you're still exhibiting those sort of, you're you're exhibiting those pick me um, reasons for being feminine, even though you've quote unquote achieved what it is that you want to achieve. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Because some of these like described masculine, described feminine traits when it pertains to a relationship, a romantic relationship, I, I subscribe to them because that is what I wanted. When, before I met my husband, I already knew that I wanted a guy who was a leader. I wanted him to have that characteristic, a very strong leader. And I am very comfortable. So I, in fact, I love it. I was asking for it. I was dying for it. You're dying for it. I wanted to, to be able to sit back and I, I'm comfortable with him being a leader. However, don't get it twisted. Not every man is a leader to me. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, just because that is the the um, the feminine slash masculine balance that I wanted in my romantic relationship, that is by no means how I live my life with all men. Do you know what I mean? I don't let my male colleagues lead me if they are not in a leadership position. I don't let my uncles, my male cousins lead, or I don't um, nurture the men around me the same way I would might nurture my husband because that is a trait that I have like it's not synonymous so what I'm saying is don't let um if your desire is you want to be more feminine to attract someone by all means do that but don't necessarily feel like that's how you have to live all your relationships when it comes to um femininity balancing it out with masculinity does that make sense I hope so <laughs> I admit, I do get a little bit triggered when, whenever you're told um, you need to do X to achieve Y, especially when, in my opinion, X should have no effect on Y in an ideal utopian world. I talked about it in my previous video about beauty standards. I said, beauty, I, it, it annoys me that beauty affects success, for example, when in my head, in an ideal world, beauty and success should not even, they shouldn't be, there's no effect there because if you if you're going to be successful in work for example it's because you should be in my opinion because you work hard but in the world we live in beauty affects success that makes sense so it's the same way that i don't feel like femininity as it pertains to attracting a man i don't feel like that should affect the success in 
you doing X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense? If that's not who you are, the two should not be working together. Anyways, bun this, bun that, bun that. <laughs> Just kidding. In conclusion, all I'm saying is if you subscribe to like this kind of new um, definition of femininity, and I understand, I understand that I am not talking about femininity in its entirety, and I'm not talking about all the ways that femininity and feminine energy are portrayed on YouTube in its entirety. I haven't watched every single video. I'm just talking about this particular side because, as I said, my goal is always to encourage. And so, if there's a good, if there's a good thing happening, I'm gonna let it happen. But if I feel like there's an error in it that I kind of want to encourage you in, I'm gonna address that, which is what I'm doing in this video. So in conclusion, if you do not subscribe to femininity in the way that it seems to be being portrayed at the moment, that is completely fine. If you do subscribe to that and that is the kind of person that you wanna be, that is also 100% fine. I just want us all to make these decisions for ourselves, make them for the reasons that we have decided we want to make them for, and that's it. Don't feel pressure like I did to try and be this super dainty feminine woman. I just, it's just not me. Hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Please do uh, watch the video before you comment so you don't hear what I'm not saying. And um, yes, please do check out some of my other recent videos where I talked about topics. I think if you like this one, you might like those ones too. Beauty standards, body image, filters cancel culture all of that stuff and i will see you in my next video subscribe follow me on instagram bye